Hello, it's Nick, and today I will show you how to choose the corner radius and corner smoothness for UI elements in Figma. You will also learn how to choose the corner radius for nested elements. In Figma, you can change the corner radius of almost any element. Let's start with the frame. Check the right side bar and look for the icon with 90 degree angle. It allows you to customize corner radius. You can either type a specific number or use a drag and drop slider. In my case, I'm changing the corner radius using the slider. It's also possible to customize the corner radius of individual corners of the element. Click on four corners icon and you will see a menu with corners. For example, here I changed the top left and the bottom right corners of the frame to zero. If you have different radiuses for corners, Figma will show you the message mixed instead of the specific number. If you are changing the corner radius of simple object, like rectangle, you can do it right in the object. Select the object, click on the dot in the corner and drag it to the center. You can see that we are changing all four corners simultaneously. If you want to change only single corner, hold Option while dragging the dot. When it comes to choosing corner radiuses, there are no strict rules on how curved your corners should be. When you design for web, you can choose any number based on how you want your design to look like. But if you design for specific platform like iOS, it's better to choose corner radius that aligns with the platform conventions. If you want to make your design feel native to iOS, use 10 pixels or 12 pixels radius. In addition to rounding corners, you can also change the corner smoothing. The difference between corner radius and smoothing is subtle. In short, smooth makes corner look beautiful. Corner smoothing extends the curve to make it continuous. You can adjust the smoothing from 0 to 100%. If you don't have a trained eye, it's likely that you won't notice corner smoothing just by looking at element. To make the difference more noticeable, I've created two versions of the same element. One with zero and another with 100% smoothing and put them side by side. You can spot the subtle difference between elements. Corner smoothing of the second element extends the curve to make it continuous. Quite handy that the corner smoothing slider shows where iOS corner smoothing is. You can see it's 60%, so you don't need to guess the number when designing for iOS. Now let's do a practical exercise. Find the corner radius for the child element. Suppose we have two objects parent container and the child element. Typically, designers tend to reuse the same corner radius for both parent and child elements. In our case, we might copy the parent, change its color, resize it to fit nicely in the parent container, align it to the center with the same gap, and leave the same corner radius. In our case, it will be 24 pixels. But by doing that, we won't get a nice looking design. Let's zoom in to find why. You see that the thickness of the gap between the parent and child is inconsistent. This area is thinner than this area. If you don't see it, let me prove it to you using a perfect circle. As you can see, only one circle fit in this area. But here we have an extra space. That's why this design doesn't look good from optical point of view. Apparently, we need to choose a different corner radius for the child element. There is a simple trick that you can use to properly select the corner radius of the child element. Select the parent element and add a stroke for the parent element. Choose inside stroke and make it the same size as the size of the gap between parent and child. In my case, it's 11 pixels. And you've just got an ideal curve. This thickness is consistent. Now let's select the child element and change its corner radius to match the black curve created by our stroke. You might also need to modify the size of the child element a bit. We end up with a corner radius of 13 pixels for the child element. Let's hide the stroke and see what we've got. Looks good. If you don't want to bother with extra alignment step, you can achieve the same result using a simple math. Take the corner radius of the parent element, in my case it's 24 pixels, and subtract the gap between the parent and child element from it. In our case it will be 24 pixels minus 11 pixels, which is 13 pixels. The result of this operation will be a corner radius for your child element. That's all for now. Let me know what you think about customizing corner radius in Figma. Thank you.